Hey friends, it's Robin. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing September releases. This is the time of year where releases skyrocket. So we have 19 books to talk about in this video. I do want to mention that a lot of these are trade published. I'm filming this a little bit earlier than I normally do, and so a lot of the places and people that I get my indie release information from haven't done these videos yet or haven't collected the books yet, and so I'm missing quite a few indie books, I'm sure, so any books that I miss I will add down in the description box. And just a little FYI that I always start this video off with, these are just the books on my personal radar. This is not some sort of collective list. So let's kick it off with September 5th. There are four books coming out that I am very excited for. The first is one that I've actually already read, and that is Queen of Thieves and Chaos by K.A. Tucker. This was one of my most anticipated books for the entire year, and it was amazing. This is a fantasy romance series. It is a portal fantasy. In book one, our heroine is human, and she is sent into this fantasy realm by some manipulative gods and she wakes up in the body of a princess but the body that she inhabits just murdered part of the royal family and now she has to survive and try to navigate all of the politics and the people that absolutely hate her and try to convince everyone that she is no longer this evil princess. This picks up directly after book two it's fantastic. The world and characters absolutely love this series. Next one on this day is The Long Game by Elena Armas. I keep meaning to look up how to pronounce this author's last name and I completely forgot, but this is the author of The Spanish Love Deception, which I haven't read. However, this is a soccer romance, which is why I picked it up. Plus there's cats and goats on the cover and... I'm easy to market to. It says that this follows a disgraced soccer executive who reluctantly enlists the help of a retired soccer star in coaching a children's team in a small town love story in the vein of Ted Lasso and it happened one summer. I love Ted Lasso. You could pretty much compare anything to Ted Lasso and I think I would read it. The next one on this day is A Shot in the Dark by Victoria Lee and this says it is a passionate and powerful romance featuring a transgender man and an ex-Orthodox woman who find each other through their devotion to art and fall in love despite all odds. Erwin has returned to New York after a decade away. The wounds of her past haven't yielded, but four years of sobriety and a scholarship to a photography program with a legend are signs of good things to come. They could be as long as she resists self-sabotage. She's lucky enough to hit it off with a handsome himbo her first night out in the city. But the morning after their mind-blowing hookup, reality comes knocking. Our hero walks into the classroom, and she realizes the man that she spent the night with is the man whose name she couldn't hear over the loud music. It's her teacher. I'm going to stop right there. I had no idea that this was a student-teacher romance, and I'm even more excited now. I believe the hero is trans and our heroine is suffering from addiction, and I know that this is supposed to be a pretty heavy story. And then the last book on this day is actually an indie book, and that is Hollow by C.M. Nascosta. I am still not 100% sure if I'm pronouncing this author's last name correctly, but this is a Headless Horseman story. I'm pretty sure it's a novella, and I love Headless Horseman retellings. I try to find one every single year for like the spooky season and I'm so glad that there is another one. It does sound like this is actually two different stories in one book. It sounds like one is an MMM polyam romance and the other one is an MF romance. On to September 7th is a new book by Tegan Hunter and that is Body Check and I believe that this is the start of a new series but a spin-off of her like first hockey romance. So this one is called The Seattle Serpents and like I said I think this is a spin-off of her other hockey romance. I have read a lot of Tegan Hunter. I was on her ARC team. I read all of her contemporary stories. I think her books are so nerdy and hilarious and I love her characters and I kind of just fell off with reading her books as things got more hectic and I need to get back to her romances because I absolutely love them. This one is following our hero who is the captain of his hockey team. He ends up having a one night stand with the heroine and then is completely consumed by her. It says that it's a standalone hockey romance featuring a one night stand, a billionaire heroine, a hot hockey player, obnoxious yet lovable teammates, 
poofy text threads, Tegan Hunter classic, plenty of steam, and a happy ending. On to September 12th, there are five books coming out on this day. First is Thank You for Sharing by Rachel Brunia Katz, and this is an interracial Jewish romance. It is childhood friends to enemies to lovers debut about two people forced to confront their pasts and save their relationship and careers. It says the conversation between our two main characters 14 years ago at summer camp ended their friendship. They find themselves seated next to each other on a plane and bitterly pick up right where they left off. Unfortunately, the hero's marketing firm was just hired at the museum where our heroine works and they are forced to collaborate with potential career-changing promotions on the line. The tension and chemistry between them builds until they are forced to confront why they broke up years ago at camp. The next is You Again by Kate Goldback. When our two main characters meet, the wrong kind of sparks fly. They hate each other instantly. Our heroine is a free-spirited, struggling comedian who likes to keep things casual, but our hero has ambitious plans, taking the culinary world by storm, find the one, and then make her breakfast in a spotless kitchen. They have absolutely nothing in common, except they happen to be sleeping with the same woman. I did not know that, and now I'm insanely excited for this. It says our two main characters never expect their past to cross again, but years later, when they're both reeling from their ego-bruising breakups, a chance encounter leads to a surprising connection, friendship. Turns out that spending time with your former nemesis is fun when you're too sad to hate each other. As friends without benefits, they find comfort in late night Netflix binges, swiping through each other's online dating profiles and bickering across the burrows. It's better than romance, until one night the unspoken boundaries of their platonic relationship begin to blur. This sounds so good. That's the first time I've ever read the synopsis. The next book on this day is another one that I'm crazy excited for. It's This Bell's Disaster by Torian Martin. This is a fake dating sapphic witchy rom-com. We are following these two main characters who kind of accidentally end up fake dating and they need to follow through on it during this potion making competition and I believe one of them messes up and accidentally gives the other a love potion. And they need to kind of keep it a secret because that's like against the rules. And now they're trying to figure out what is real and what isn't. I love fake dating. I love witchy romances. This is one that I'm crazy excited for. And I believe by the time this video is going up, I will have read that. And I do have a vlog for a whole lot of these coming very soon. And then the next book is The Bone Collector by Anli James. This is the first book in the Watch series, which is the second spinoff of the Necessary Evil series. We are following the school for vigilante killers that was introduced in book six. I believe this one's student teacher it says that it's an action-packed, smoking-hot, age-gap romance that follows a rule-following assassin turned reluctant teacher of psychopaths, an adorable, off-limits, fumbling student who can't seem to stay away from each other. I love the Necessary Evil series. I loved the spinoff. I talked about this when I reviewed Paladin, but at this point, I'm so ridiculously attached to this world and these characters. And then the last book on this day is Witch of Wild Things by Raquel Vasquez Gilliland. I listened to the pronunciation of this author's name like nine times and I still feel like I completely butchered it. So I apologize if I did in fact completely butcher it. But this is a contemporary witchy romance family saga. Legend goes that long ago, a Flores woman offended the old gods and their family was cursed as a result. Now every woman born in the family has a touch of magic. Our heroine has been running from her family and their gifts ever since her younger sister died. And eight years later, she returns to her hometown. She takes back her job at the Cranberry Rose Company and uses her ability to communicate with plants to discover unusual heritage specimens in the surrounding lands. But what should be a simple task is complicated by her partner in botany sleuthing. He broke her heart in high school and she never fully recovered. Working together is reminding her of all their past tender, genuine moments. And new feelings for this mature, sexy man are starting to take root in her heart. With rare plants to find, a dead sister who keeps bringing her coffee, and another sister whose anger fills the sky with lightning, our heroine doesn't have time for romance. But being with the hero is like standing in the middle of a field on the cusp of a summer thunderstorm. 
supercharged and inevitable. I love a good witchy romance and I think this is going to be a perfect September read. On to the 14th, we have another indie book. It's called A Discovery, Love and Other Things by Victoria Woods and this is another student teacher romance but I believe our main character is like well into college. It says eight weeks excavating the Egyptian desert under a world-renowned archaeologist. That's what our heroine expected when she accepted the position for a third-year field internship. She never thought she'd find herself literally under said archaeologist. Our hero is everything she was not expecting in a professor, broody, moody, and hot as hell. She might have been able to excuse his mercurial ways if only he hadn't chosen violence and berated her in front of the entire dig crew. With no luggage, a sprained ankle, and a suspension notice from him, her internship is already a complete disaster and it's only the second day. If she wants to graduate with the rest of her class, she needs to complete this internship as scheduled. Seeing no other option, she swallows her pride and decides to play nice, but she can barely offer a bogus apology and her fake smile before he completely disarms her leaving her confused and very turned on. Can they keep their chemistry a secret? Or will her discovery of love and other things derail her career before it even starts? This just sounds so cute. When I saw Archaeologist and Student Teacher Enemies to Lovers, I immediately added it to my TBR. On to the 15th, we have another indie release that is Cross the Line by Simone Sultani. And this is a Formula One romance, which is something I've never read before. I believe our hero ends up suffering like a social media disaster and he needs help cleaning up his image, classic trope. And by chance at a party, he ends up bumping into our heroine, who also happens to be his best friend's little sister and someone that he kissed last year and hasn't been able to stop thinking about. And our heroine has recently graduated with her sports marketing degree. And so she agrees to help him. And they, of course, are going to keep things professional and feelings happen. It sounds really cute. It sounds like a very classic setup. However, I've never read a sports romance featuring a Formula One racer. So I think it could be a fun twist on sports romance. Which leads us right into September 19th. We have Cleat Cute by Meryl Wilsner, which is another sports romance, obviously. It's a sapphic soccer romance. We are following rivals to lovers. One of our main characters has been on the women's national team for quite a long time, but she's been sidelined and kind of towards the end of her career. The other heroine ends up joining the team. She's young and at the height of her career, and she has this like love for the sport that the other heroine has lost. And I believe they end up having like a teammates with benefits sort of thing. I really love how steamy Meryl Wilsner's sapphic romances are. And I'm hoping that's the case with this one. Then we have A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed, which is completely different than everything else on this list. This is a YA fantasy, like gothic fantasy. But I have read from this author before and I really want to read more of her books. It says that our heroine has been haunted by visions of the fairy king since she was a child and she's found solace in the pages of this book. This book is the only thing keeping her afloat through her stifling first term at a prestigious architecture college. So when her family announces a contest to design the late author's house, she feels certain that this is her destiny. But the manor is an impossible task, a musty, decrepit estate on the brink of crumbling into a hungry sea. When she arrives, she finds she isn't the only one who's made a temporary home there. A young scholar is studying the papers and is determined to prove that her favorite author is a fraud. The two rival students investigate the reclusive author's legacy, piecing together clues through letters, books, and diaries. They discover that the house's foundation isn't the only thing that can't be trusted. There are dark forces, both mortal and magic, conspiring against them. There is just something about the idea of gothic crumbling manner mixed with fairies that is highly intriguing. And then the last book on this day is a sequel, and that is A Nobleman's Guide to Seducing a Scoundrel by K.J. Charles. This is the follow-up to The Secret Lives of Country Gentlemen. I'm actually not sure how interconnected these are. My library copy for book one actually just came in, and so I'm about to listen to it, but I haven't yet. I'm assuming that it's kind of similar to other historical romance series in the vein that like it's set in the same world and the characters all know each other, but they're following different couples. It sounds like this is kind of in opposites attract, different worlds, romance, and Earl is falling in love with a smuggler. And the two of them need to work together to keep his position as an Earl. But I have heard really good things about 
this series. So even though I'm not the biggest historical romance reader, I am very curious by these ones since they have gotten such good reviews. On to September 26th, we have three more books coming out. First is Unrealistic Expectations by Andy J. Christopher, and I actually don't know anything about this, so we are going to read the synopsis. It says there are a lot of things that can go wrong on an author's publication day, but breaking up with her long-term boyfriend might just be the top of her list. She also didn't expect to run into her old crush the very next day. When her heroine goes into crisis mode about the PR nightmare, she proposes the first solution that comes to her mind, fake dating. Luckily, her crush seems game. He is used to being a constant disappointment, which is why he can't and won't commit to a relationship. Unfortunately for him, his last girlfriend used her vast social media power to make sure everyone knows how much he underperforms. Sad. Fake dating for the heroine's book promotion seems like the perfect cover, and maybe she can teach him something along the way. Sex lessons. Love it. Then we have Time to Shine by Rachel Reed, and this is another hockey romance from this author. It sounds like our hero has been called up from the farm team and is now the backup goalie. He has always been a bit of a loner, but the young superstar on the team keeps trying to talk to him and keeps treating him like they are old best friends. He's endlessly charming, completely laid back in a way that our hero absolutely cannot relate to. They couldn't have less in common, but when the hero needs a place to live that's not a hotel room, the other hero has just bought a massive house and hates being alone. It sounds like it's roommates, opposites attract, grumpy sunshine. I absolutely can't wait. And then the last book on this day is actually a new addition to my TBR, and I actually got this one from Elle from EV Novels, and that is The Witches of Bone Hill by Ava Morgan. It says this is a story about family secrets and two young women who discover their Nordic witches. Our heroine's meticulously crafted life and career in Dallas are crashing down around her thanks to a philandering husband and criminal debts. When her older sister informs her that the great aunt they never met has died and they must travel to a small town in Connecticut to deal with the estate, she sees an opportunity to unload the house and save herself. But once they are there, they learn they are getting much more than they bargained for. The Victorian mansion they stand to inherit is bound in a dynasty trust controlled by their late aunt's aging attorney, who insists they inhabit the house, but keeps them in the dark about the peculiar rituals of their ancestors. Not to mention a sexy, tattooed groundskeeper with a shrouded past who refuses to leave the carriage house and a crypt full of dead relatives looming, looming at the property line. As both women grapple with their current predicament, they come face to face with a haunting family secret, the truth of what happened to their mother, and an enemy that's been stalking them from the shadows for generations. The sisters must uncover the power within them to heal their fractured relationship, reverse their mysteriously declining health, and claim the lineage they wanted to escape but now must embrace if they are to survive. I'm very interested in this. Again, witchy sort of stories, perfect for September. And then the last book on this list, on September 29th, we have Two for Tea, which is another book by C.M. Nascosta. This is another book in the Cambric, Cambric Creek series, but this one can be read as a standalone. It says that this is a human monster romance featuring a female witch and a non-binary shadow creature. It is set in the world of Cambric Creek, but it can be joined as a standalone. Creepy, cozy aesthetic, working through depression, why choose appendages, and finding one's place. So that is all of the books that I currently know about. Let me know if there are any books that you know about that are coming out this month that weren't on this list. I would love to add them to my radar. And let me know if any of the ones that I did talk about are on your most anticipated, or if you've added them to your TBR now. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye!